boys and girls. It's good to see you again. Welcome back to our thrill ride through God's creation. If you remember this week, so far, we've learned that in Exodus 20, for in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. In six short days, everything was made. And on day two, we learned in the book of John that your word is truth. God's word is truth. The Bible says it, and that settles it. So today, we're going to learn about admit, believe, forever receive. And our scripture, our incredible verse for today is Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, theme parks love to brag about their thrill rides. Every year, they seem to add new ones that are bigger or taller or faster or wilder. Some of these rides can cost up to a million dollars to build. Have you ever ridden an exciting thrill ride? How about a roller coaster? Roller coasters are fun because they have high points and they have low points. In our main attraction today, we're going to go through some of the high points and low points of time that, that are recorded in the Bible. And you're going to help me as we go along. As we're sharing about these points, I want you to think if it's a high point in time or if it's a low point in time. Okay? So, number one, a perfect world, as in Genesis 1 and 2. Our thrill ride starts with the very first words in the Bible. Do you remember what Genesis 1 1 says? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you remember that when God made the earth, it was the best ever? It was perfect. The Bible says over and over that everything God made was good. That includes the first two people he made, Adam and Eve. So everything was good. This means there was nothing bad yet. So would that have been a high point or a low point? The Bible tells us everything was good. So it was a high point. It wasn't long, however, before the ride through time took a deep, deep plunge. Now, in the Bible, in Genesis 3, we're going to see what it says happened right after creation. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So, everything is no longer perfect. We have an evil serpent. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the tree of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it, or touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, You will surely not die, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she also gave her husband with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man, and he said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate it. This is called the fall of man. The fall of man was a major event that caused everything to change. It was a time that Adam sinned and fell from, from perfection. Sin is when we disobey God's commands. For example, God tells us to obey our parents. Have you ever disobeyed your mom or dad? That's sin. The Bible tells us Adam was the first to sin, but all of us sin. When we sin, we are disobeying a perfect, 
loving, holy God. So, do you think that when Adam and Eve sinned, they, they disobeyed God and they sinned, do you think that was a high point or a low point? It was a low point. Next, we're going to talk about a broken world, and we're still in Genesis 3 for this. Since God is perfect, he has to punish sin. And as we travel along further in the Bible, we see God punishes the serpent, the man, and the woman because they didn't obey him. That punishment affected the whole world and all of us in it too. So let's see what happened to the serpent first. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 14, the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field, and on your belly you will go, and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. So what does God say will happen to the serpent? That, that he will crawl on his belly? That the man and woman will not like him? So when God says this, it applies in a general way to all animal serpents. The other animals were affected also. We don't know how much they were affected, but we know that before this time, all animals and people only ate plants, and they got along with each other. But sometime after Adam sinned, animals began to attack each other and needed ways to protect themselves. Now, God knew ahead of time that this would happen, and he knew that they would need protection at some point. Um, so he created mechanisms in them when he, defense mechanisms when he created them. These would be things such as a stinky odor of a skunk, um, the ink spray of an octopus, the hard shell of a turtle. So before now, animals wouldn't have used those things, but they would need these types of things after Adam sinned. So besides talking about animals, however, this punishment also applies to the ultimate evildoer, Satan, who is the devil. Sadly, this is when the war between man and God began. Satan is against God, and he tries to make us doubt God's word and determine that we can do everything on our own, which is not true. God goes on to tell the woman what her punishment will be. That's in Genesis 3.16. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain, you will bring forth children. Yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. So what do you think that means? It says that women will have pain when they give birth to their children. Is this true? It is true. It also says that women will desire to rule over their husbands, which means they'll want to be in control or in charge of their husbands. Now it's man's turn. Let's see what God says to Adam. In Genesis 3, 17, Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread, till you return to the ground. Because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. What do you think this means? It says the ground will be cursed. That's when thorns and thistles and bad things in nature came about. God not only placed a curse on the animals, he also placed a curse on the plants. In fact, this curse affected the whole universe. Our earth now has volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, and other disasters. This is also when work became hard. Every time you have to clean your room or study hard or do any job that you don't like, you can remember it all started with Adam's sin. But more seriously, Adam's sin brought death. Let's close our eyes for a second. Because of man's disobedience, God couldn't allow sinful man to live forever with perfect God. So he banished man from the garden so he wouldn't be able to eat from the tree of life and told him he would one day die. The animals would die too. So now, think about what's happened to, in, in this situation. Do you think that this was a high point or a low point when Adam and Eve sinned? It was definitely a low point. There's really good news, though. You see, God loves you very, very much. And he didn't want you to die and be separated 
from him forever in a place called hell. So he made a way for you to be able to live forever with him as a child of God in heaven. God sent his son Jesus to earth. Luke 2, 10 and 11 says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now when Jesus was born, do you think it was a high point or a low point? It was certainly a high point. Next, Jesus was both God and man. He lived a perfect life. He always obeyed God, but he was put to death. Sinful man put him to death on a cross. When Jesus died, do you think it was a high point or a low point? It seems like a low point because Jesus died a cruel and painful death. But he did this because he loves me and you. We know this because in John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Remember that God said the punishment for sin is death when Adam sinned. We can't pay for sin on our own. Jesus took the punishment for my sin and for your sin. He died in our place. This was God's plan from the beginning. So really, it was a high point too, because this is how God made a way for us to be forgiven and have eternal life. Now we come to a super happy time. Did you know that Jesus didn't stay dead? He came alive again. So this shows that God accepted what Jesus did for us. God loves us and wants to, us to be his children and live with him forever. He offers us the gift of eternal life because of what Jesus did. When Jesus came back to life, do you think it was a high point or a low point? It was definitely a high point. Now it's time to finish out our thrill ride. How will your thrill ride end? Jesus is going to come back someday, and this sin-filled, messed-up world is going to be made perfect again. He will make a new heaven and a new earth. We read about that in Revelation 21, verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away. It's going to be incredible. Everything will be perfect. We read in 21. Revelation 21, 4, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. So it's going to be an incredible place, but you have to receive the gift of eternal life and become a child of God to, get, to live there. Our memory verse, Romans 10, 9, says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart with, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you're already in God's family, that's wonderful. But if you're not, we pray that you'll understand very soon how much you need him. I want you to ask yourself, have I received the gift of eternal life and became a child of God? Join us back tomorrow to learn more. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day to join with these children. Um, Lord, I pray for them. I pray for their hearts that they will be open to you, that they will know how much they need you, and that they can live an eternal life with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.